another big package here. Big all around. So it's more than a foot square and, well, I don't know, 10 inches deep. I'm not opening it on camera. So this is another WaveTech 182, but this is the A model. It appears to be cosmetically pretty nice. Look at this little feature here. Absolutely worthless. On the lower shelf of the uh, front enclosure, it says WaveTech. That means nothing, of course. A couple of holes drilled in the top. Don't know what that means. Maybe it was a carry handle. The other wave tech was the 182. Was not marked at all back here. This is a warning of the wave tech label. I can see that the fuse has been replaced occasionally. And here it says it's a property of Hawking Technical College. And this was barely visible in the photograph, but the two rear enclosure screws are missing. Hope that doesn't bode ill. And there's a little gizmo here. I don't remember that on the uh, 182. Appears to be a pop rivet. So. We'll have to open this up and see whether it's been modified. Now the only difference between the 182 and the 182A is that the 182 goes to 2 MHz while this goes to 4 MHz. I think otherwise they're physically and functionally identical. But we'll take a look. Well, I've opened it up. I've taken off the top and bottom case. The board itself was secured to the bottom half of the case with four screws. At least it was designed to be fastened with four screws. The bottom of the case has standoff here and here, and provisions for standoffs here and here in the rear, where the circuit boards uh, secured to these standoffs. These standoffs are missing, as were the screws. And as I noted in the opening, these case top to bottom screws were missing. And sure enough, there is a popper of it, or remains of one, but I have no idea what it's possibly for. There's clogged <laughs> inserts here and here. And there's brass inserts here and here that were not used. I'm not sure why these are clogged, why the openings are filled with gunk. I took it out of the case in order to see if anything's been done modification-wise. And the only... I have to examine it closer, but I'm not seeing any joints that don't look factory, except for this corner. It looks like something was done here involving the output wires. I, I don't see that the transistors were replaced. This joint doesn't look disturbed. Something was done here. I 
I think there's a date code here of 8303 maybe. No, it's 8035. There's an 8040 up here. I would say this thing's made around 1980. I don't see any other identifiable markings. Uh, there's an 8143 on the rear panel. Drag everything around so you can see that 8143. I'll proceed to put the bottom back on and we'll see if the damn thing works. I'm convinced the only thing that was done to this machine is to replace this resistor. And the reason I think it will be a bit obscure here, look at the tolerance bands on all the rest of the resistors. They are facing either down or to the right. Here's a couple more. See the tolerance bands are facing down. All the resistors that are color coded in the vertical position, the tolerance band is facing down. I understand you can install a resistor in either direction, but good practice is to make them all face the same direction for reading purposes. This resistor, for terms of conventional installation, is incorrectly installed. It doesn't match any of the other resistors. Silver, 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 silver. Silver down. Silver facing the wrong way. I was able to download a copy of the instruction manual from the web for free. Uh, very nice. I'm getting more and more impressed about this uh, era wave tech stuff. Uh, this manual was updated in 3 of 86. 3 of 86. It was copyrighted in 82. But a complete explanation of the theory of operation a complete calibration setup or alignment and I found out by checking the parts list that this resistor we were suspect of right here was supposed to be about this size, uh, one eighth watt. This is a one half watt resistor and slightly off value. That's the advantage of having a complete parts list. Now, this manual, as well as the one for the 182, has some 17 by 11 or 11 by 17 fold-out sheets which are well worth having even if you have to pay for the printing of them. The suspect resistors across the low output uh, 54.9 ohm 8th watt and you can see what happened. They apparently had an exercise in this electronics laboratory where they connected a signal or they connected a piece of equipment to the low output 
and inadvertently introduced something into it and burned up that resistor. I don't believe I need to do any calibration or alignment except perhaps to make the dial accurate at the low end. It seems to be a little bit off down here. The high end on all ranges seems very very good. Maybe a little off. I'm reading 3.8 megahertz and it's obviously not 3.8. So I'll touch up the high and low ends and we'll see how that does. I've got the output of the generator set for 4 megahertz and you can see marker 1 is at 4 megahertz and it's down about minus a half a dB but for all practical purposes it's 0 dB. Here's the uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh harmonic. Uh, this is 4 megahertz and this is 20 megahertz. You can see the uh, third harmonic is down at minus 30 dB, 35 dB. Change it to 2 megahertz. Here we're set up at 2 megahertz. You can see we're still, the third harmonic is still down uh, 30 dB. Everything else is down 40. Fifty-four. So spectral purity on the thing is pretty good, and that's a, a relationship of uh, harmonic distortion. We'll take a look at the uh, oscilloscope one time. This is a four megahertz sine wave. I've got the dial adjusted to four and it's 4.017 megahertz. It's 10 volts peak to peak. Here's a 4 megahertz triangular wave. Uh, not too sharp, but a pretty good triangle. And here's a square wave. We're back to 2 megahertz once. Still a nice square wave, triangular wave, sine wave. Now this is with a 50 ohm termination on the oscilloscope. One kilohertz, sine, Triangle, square, 100 kilohertz, square, triangle, side, 20 kilohertz. Now I touched up the frequency, I did not do much else to it. That's more or less the way it's received. set for 200 Hertz and you can see it's 197 Hertz 197.8 so for an analog dial that's as good as you can get I think so I think I'll put this on my bench top and you can see me use it in future videos